Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Founders Day. This is the virtual sisterhood tea. Um, I want to uh, give a shout out to the seniors class of 2020. I'm here with uh, two seniors, my daughter, Meridian Buckner Swain, who unfortunately didn't get her robe today, and my niece, Madeline Buckner McCurdy, who unfortunately didn't get her tassel. Uh, but we are making the best of uh, staying in place and we are happy to be here with you. Uh, we are having our tea party. So ladies. So um, we're celebrating founders, we're celebrating um, the, the uh, founding of Spelman in the basement of, um, of, uh, found, of Friendship Baptist Church. And I just want to tell you how I got to Spelman. Um, when I was a senior in high school, I got a phone call from my cousin, Leslie Sykes, uh, also class of 87, and she said, hey, Tara, let's go to college together. And I said, okay. She said, okay, okay, okay. Where have you applied? And I said, well, my first choice was the University of Minnesota. My father was a professor there. And Leslie said, Tara, I live in Southern California. There's no way I'm going to Minnesota for college. And so after uh, comparing notes on, you know, where we had applied and everything, she said, Tara, Let's go to Spelman College because Daff goes there. And Daff loves Spelman, and Spelman creates strong Black women, and we should be there. And so, um, almost the next day when I got to school, I looked up the, um, uh, e the address and, and I got my application. As soon as um, I got it, I filled it out, and the rest is history for me. Uh, I graduated in 1987. I was in a class with uh, two other cousins, Leslie Sykes, uh, who had the great idea, and um, uh, Jennifer uh, Thompson Redmond, um, who uh, is also my cousin. Um, and so we uh, spent four glorious years there on campus. Um, some of the things that I remember about Spelman include uh, taking Dr. Marilyn Davis's class and um, her support of me um, in helping me through the political science program. Um, I remember uh, the wonderful, wonderful friendships I formed and this idea that the sisterhood um, means that when you call somebody, they come and um, it has been a wonderful, wonderful um, experience for me. Um, who am I? I am Tara Buckner, the president of the National Alumni Association of Spelman College. Um, and I'm so, so glad to, to be here with you. Um, just want to give a shout out to, um, in addition to these two, the uh, 11 other family members that have come through Spelman and um, all of the friends including that uh, special group of friends um, that includes um, Kirsten and Margaret and Candace and Cassandra. Um, I will tell you um, every day I think about Spelman, I think about the wonderful experiences I had there, the growing that I did there, and I'm always, always happy to give uh, what I have to give to, to Spelman. Um, with that, I would like to turn it over to uh, the far west region, uh, and it happens to be my genesis, uh, the Honorable Daphne Grace Sykes. Thank you. When I was a teenager, uh, then U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations and civil rights icon Andrew Young came to my home. He asked me where I was going to college. He said I should consider Spelman because his daughter went to Spelman College. And next thing I knew, poof, I got an application in the mail. And as Tara said with her case, the rest is history. First in my family to attend Spelman, if only by that fortuitous encounter with that great American 
Andrew Young. Today, the 8th, 9th, and 10th cousins now attend, and that legacy continues. Alas, this is a celebration and confirmation at once of Spelman College. For we who had the great fortune and privilege to grace her hallowed halls of Tapley and of Rockefeller and of Giles with those fantastic and extraordinary professors such as Dr. Sylvia Bozeman in math and Dr. Gabriel, Judy Gaber Hewitt. We who spent Thursday morning seated in the rich walnut wooden pews of Sisters Chapel, her stately white pillars, their protective embrace, listening to the time-honored glorious anthems and familiar hymns from Dr. Joyce Johnson's Bringing Alive That Great pipe organ and the inspiring words of orators like Dr. Patricia Russell McLeod. Days when the Alma Upshaw cafeteria temporarily became a dance hall with the latest of R and B reverberating from the halls while students from all over the AUC, mostly Morehouse men, shoulder to shoulder, hands in the air, moving in rhythm. Gathering in the courtyard on a Friday after classes, eagerly awaiting a Greek step showdown, those moments steeped in the rich traditions of Black American culture. We who spent long Atlanta nights in landmark libraries and quiet dorm basements and lounges in critical thought and discussions and study groups, choosing to change the world, diverse, yet variations on a theme were we. We who we were galed by the likes of Leontine Price and Jacob Lawrence and Lena Horne, and then First Lady and Valerie Jarrett and Rosalind Gates Brewer, the very best of us. And finally, we graduates who in crisp white dresses and black pumps confidently traversed the sprawling lawn and one by one, under the ivy-clad arches in the oval, we proudly marched as late 19th century red brick buildings, strong yet serene, that surrounded us bore witness. We emerged, we have been changed, and we thrive. Now to the Great Lakes region, delegate, my sister, Brittany Rhodes Wilson. Thank you for that introduction. Hello, everyone, and happy Founders Day. Um, I am Brittany Rhodes Wilson, class of 2011. Um, I am representing the Great Lakes region. So shout out to everyone in the Midwest area. Happy Founders Day, everyone. Um, I also am the vice president for the uh, Kansas City NASAC chapter. Um, we actually are a very new chapter to the NASAC family. We were chartered uh, May 20th of 2017. And so it's been such a wonderful opportunity getting this off of the ground for um, this particular region. Um, one thing that I am so happy about is that I'm able to interact with uh, students that are interested in attending Spelman. I've helped several students um, with their applications. I am so happy to say that every single one of them have been accepted and are current students now. Um, and I also serve as a mentor for them. And so it's so wonderful to be able to um, share that experience as it is something that I did not have here in the Kansas City area um, when I was uh, coming up. One thing I can say about my Spelman experience that I, well, a couple of things that I remember. Um, one major thing that I will never forget was the day that President Barack Obama was elected president in 2008. We had a huge watch party in uh, Lower Manly and CNN cameras were there, BET, um, all sorts of things. And I just remember when they announced that Barack Obama was going to be the elected president. Uh, everyone was so excited and cheering and crying and hugging. And I remember we all ran out of Lower Manly out in the streets just celebrating. Um, our Morehouse brothers, Clark 
Atlanta brothers and sisters came and joined us. Everyone was in the streets just celebrating and having a good time. And that's something that I will never forget um, with my time at Spelman. I also would like to mention that um, Spelman has been a wonderful opportunity for me um, in my career as well. Um, I have a mentor who is currently the department chair of uh, the chemistry department. I did get my degree in uh, chemistry, um, Dr. Leita Winfield. She tremendously helped me to even stay at Spelman's, um, at Spelman's doors because I did not receive any scholarships or anything. And I remember when I joined her research lab, she always gave me any sort of um, scholarship opportunities that came to her desk. She would pass them along to me. Um, she allowed me she allowed me to uh, just um, honestly stay at Spelman's doors with giving me opportunities for scholarships. And so I do wanna thank her. I love her to death. And um, I would like to go ahead and pass this along to uh, my sister from the South Central region, Kim Williams. Hi everyone, my name is Kim Williams, class of 2001, and I was a sociology major at Spelman. I just want to give a shout out to the South Central region, especially the Houston chapter. Um, in Houston, we've been making lots of moves. Uh, we recently hosted Rosalind Brewer for our Game Changers luncheon and started an endowed scholarship fund, which we're really excited about. One of our dear Spelman sisters, Dr. Carolyn Evans Shabazz, was elected to the city council for the city of Houston. And so we have lots of great women doing lots of great things who are always so inspirational for everything that we do. Um, <clears throat> Spelman embodies sisterhood and draws out our superpowers, our purpose, and our passion to do good in the world. Um, the National Association of Spelman College uh, Alumni Association of Spelman College for me has been central to my life since graduating. Um, I have connected with Spelman sisters in every city that I've lived in since graduating from Spelman. And I've had the honor of serving as chapter president for both the New Orleans chapter and the Houston chapter. The sisterhood that I've experienced through NAASC pushes me to keep doing the best that I can and being the best version of myself that I can be. And I'm truly inspired every day by the accomplishments the passion, the love, and the sisterhood that I've experienced while at Salmon and beyond. So thank you and happy Founders Day. And with that, I want to introduce my Salmon sister, Dawn Marcel. Hey, Kim, and thank you. Um, Kim and I are both South Central Region and um, just want to give a shout out to all of the chapters across the region. There are only six of us. We are small but mighty. And um, each chapter has done amazing um, efforts in local communities to support, uh, financially support and provide scholarships to students um, enrolled at Spelman annually for years now and even decades at uh, Baton Rouge because um, I actually was a recipient of a scholarship from um, Baton Rouge chapter of um, Spelman Alumni Association when I was a student there and I graduated in 1989. Um, my Spelman story is twofold. Well, there are many, but I have one from the very beginning and one from now that I wanna share. The one from the very beginning is there was a Spelman alum from here named Dorothy Steptoe. And Miss Steptoe finished in 63, I believe. And she said, you look like Spelman. And I didn't know what Spelman was. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And for me, I'm Southernites. And I knew of Gramlin, Xavier, Dillard, and Ivy Leagues, but not Spelman. And whatever it was, I knew I looked like it. And I was like, okay, yeah. And then my high school boyfriend went to Morehouse. And so my parents are like, you are not going to Spelman. And my college, my high school guidance counselor said, well, she thought I wanted to go because he was there as well. And she was like, well, if you must be in Atlanta, then I suggest you go to Emory or Agnes Scott. And I was like, who and what is Agnes Scott and why would I do that? And so 
it got to a point where I told everyone if I didn't go to Spelman, I wasn't going to college and a mine was a terrible thing to waste, which was the UNCF slogan at the time. <laughs> and I was so glad I went. And when I was there, I knew I wanted to be a doctor when I went. But then through our health careers program, a lot of Spelmanites came back and they were very active with CDC and the Georgia Department of Health. And many of them had MPHs. And I was also gifted a book written by Deborah Prothero Stith, who was an alum who was an MD and PH. Long story short, I knew when I graduated, I wanted to pursue an MPH, although I didn't know what it was when I was going. And so now, um, and many people would ask me, why? Well, why do you want to do that? You already have an MD. What do you even need an MPH for? And so now they know. And as we are currently in this pandemic, and we are absolutely fighting this war from a public health perspective, I am so grateful that I am equipped beyond the books because I went to Spelman. And um, as I sing our hymn and go to work every day and through the night, I, I am just undaunted by this fight and, and I'm just so grateful. And NSC has kept me actively connected to my sisters. Um, and with that, I'd like to pass the mic to Pamela Cooper from the Great 88. They are an awesome class. And um, she is the, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> she is the uh, Southeast Regional Coordinator. And she's an awesome coordinator at that. Pam? Oh, awesome. Thank you, Dawn. Um, I am Pamela Cooper. And I am so excited to be the regional coordinator for the sisterly Southeast region. And we talk about our legacy for Spelman. We have a legacy of learning. We have a legacy of leading. We have a legacy of loving. And the confluence of all these things during these challenging times have just really touched me in ways I would have never imagined. Now, I am sitting here with my cute Spelman College teapot, but what has really come to play, and who would have thought a year ago that this toilet tissue, this wipes, would really change my spirit, uh, Spelman experience. We've had chapters that are so amazing and innovative. They've been calling and checking in on their Golden Girl sisters, their Diamond Daughter sisters, delivering um, items that we know our sisters need. That's what sisterhood is about. That is that part that is undaunted. We, we will do what it takes. I had sisters texting me saying, hey, I think you live over in this area of town. <laughs> that Costco has a toilet paper and paper towels. Um, that's what Spelman sisters do. We have a uh, just a sisterhood um, as one of my favorite alum and more who I talked to about a week ago from the class of 43. She's 100 years old. And um, I just called to do a check in and she said she had, she, of course, Spelman women were always up to date. So she had her, uh, her she has her cell phone and she said, I'm gonna text you back because another Spelman sister had called me earlier today. And so I just love our sisterhood. Our sisters are, we are just undaunted in the way. We have two sisters in our region, um, Melanie Leffridge Harris. She's <laughs> conducting a, a judicial campaign. She's running for Fulton County judge. We um, have Cynthia Wallace, who's running for Congress in Charlotte. They're doing um, against Dan Bishop, who is the incumbent for Congress. And they're doing Zoom videos. They're finding, figuring out ways to be trailblazers because that's what Spelman taught us. That was our Spelman investment. Like so many other people, I was um, on my way someplace else, University of Kansas to be exact. I'm from Kansas. Um, Tara's cousin, Jennifer, was the other Black person everybody from Spelman knew from Kansas. It's always like one. And then Jackie Basie was behind me, but I, I didn't know them before coming. But when I told the recruiter, who was an African-American woman, I wanted to come to um, Spelman. She was so excited. She came behind there. She said, you can come back to this school later. You go to Spelman. And that's how I got here. So I just really wanted to recognize and thank um, the women that lead all throughout the region, we have four chapter presidents who work in 
the psychological services who are frontline every day, risking their and lives, you're walking past, make make a um, impact. And those are um, our two chapter presidents in Florida, Jaleesa Jones and Chantel Bryan. They work in psych with psychological in psychological health. We have Dion in Alabama. We also have um, Tanita Tiago. And then we also have um, the Augusta chapter president, intern, in, a doctor of internal medicine and psychiatrist, Vanessa Spearman, who is going out every day. And then need I say, she doesn't need an introduction, but Donna Marcel doing amazing things in her region. And I know we have sisters all throughout the uh, country who are undaunted, who are, um, when you see a Spelman woman, that woman like that, that's the thing when people say you look like Spelman or, oh, you went to Spelman. It's because we are making things happen. So we know we're celebrating differently and virtually, and it may not be what we had, would expect it. Um, to my dear classmate and Atlanta chapter member, Joy Smith, who had already get, started gathering white dresses <laughs> for Say Yes to the White Dress, um, an event we have every year to gift people white dresses. I promise you, class of 2020, we will celebrate with you. We have white dresses to give out. Um, I'm just grateful to be a part of this wonderful sisterhood. And with that being said, I um, about our extraordinary givers who give extraordinary gifts, I'm so honored to introduce our next person who is Bernie De Jackson from the class of 68. My name is Vernita Jackson. Yes, I'm from the class of 68, and I'm probably the most elder on this conversation. I'm sure that. I'm sure that you are wondering why would you have a Spelman sister from the 60s? Well, we have Spelman sisters from the 50s and the 40s who are still active. But let me just begin by saying, my favorite Spelman relationship began on September 19th in 1964 when I entered the doors of Morehouse North and met my roommate, Melanie Johnson, now Melanie Rutherford. Melanie and I have been friends and best friends for over 55 years. We both know each other's family members, including grands, and we share so many experiences daily. She keeps me grounded, and she always has excellent advice and is the wittiest person that I know. She reminds me that I am true blue. I began my experience with Spelman after I left Spelman when I worked at at and I received an award or reward, monetary reward, because I graduated or because I attended Spelman. And I thought, wow, I'm getting money because I went to Spelman College. I soon found out that college students received money and that was because they wanted them to give back. I became an alumni and it was through my other Spelman sisters that worked with me at at and in New York and New Jersey that I began, became an NAASC member. I served as the program chair for many years in the New York chapter and subsequently inspired and enriched the importance of scholarship service to our communities through that position. When I moved to Atlanta, I reunited with Stephanie Bush, who was the president of the Atlanta chapter at that time. She asked me, would you recruit some classmates for us? I began that job diligently, and I recruited those people who had not graduated from Spelman, who, but who attended Spelman. Because remember, once you enter Spelman's gates, you're always a Spelman sister. Many of those sisters came back for our 50th Golden Girls reunion. Some of them had not entered Spelman gates in 50 years but they were so glad to be a part 
of the Spelman Sisterhood. They gave money. They gave lots of money. Our Spelman class of 1968 raised $424,000. We had the most participants in that year for the, grad for the reunion, and we had the most participation over five years. That was an honor that no one ever expected us to achieve. It is with the opportunity of giving that our hearts are bound. The success of our Golden Girls was not because I said I would be a part of Spelman. It was because my parents chose to send me to Spelman. I know that Spelman has been a part of my life ever since I was a little kid. They said, you're going to Spelman. I didn't even know what Spelman was. But after I left, I found that joining the Guardian Society and plan giving was important, a very important part of my legacy. Sacrificing is not a really big deal, but giving because you can and because you want to is a big deal. I was so happy when I was able to become a part of the Guardian Society. I was even happier when I became a member of the Estate Society, which is the President's Society, the people who give back a part of their estate. All we have to do is just give. You can give time, you can give money, you can give energy. But remember one thing, there's a legacy that you all want to leave. My legacy is that I want to be felt or remembered as a sister who really cared and humbly accepted the class agent assignment for the class of 1968 Golden Girls. We reached our goal, we surpassed our goal. And with the help of an exceptionally strong committee, we gave. It's important that you give, give your time, give your money, give your energy, but most of all, give back to where you came from because God has blessed us many, many years. And now I'm going to turn it over to Kara. Well, thank you for that. And good afternoon, everyone. I hope that everyone is staying healthy and safe. And it's so nice to be able to connect in this way while we're all living under quarantine life. First, let me start by saying happy Founders Day to everyone. Um, and as you mentioned, my name is Cara Johnson Hughes, and I was an economics major in the class of 2003. So to shout out to all my HH sisters. Um, but this year's theme is the legacy continues. And I'd like to talk about how that is very near and dear to my heart. My Spellman story starts and continues with the legacy of my late grandmother, Joan Betty Johnson. And while she didn't attend Spelman, she absolutely loved Spelman and everything that it stands for. Educating black women leaders was a passion of hers. My grandmother was a strong black woman and a fearless leader. She and my grandfather co-founded Johnson Products Hair Care Company, which was the manufacturer of Ultra Sheen, Afro Sheen, and many other brands. She was a leader in business at a time when women, let alone black women, were not or were very few. She was a pioneer in that respect. It was her leadership skills, her passion for women, her business savvy that ultimately led her to becoming a trustee of Spelman College in 1982, where she served under two presidents, Donald Stewart and the inevitable Mrs. Janetta B. Cole, whom they shared a very personal relationship and deep relationship. Upon my grandmother's transition from this life, she was so proud to be able to leave a million dollar gift to Spellman. It is because of my grandmother that my sister, Erin Johnson Tolfrey, who graduated as well as an economics major in class of 2001, and I attended Spellman. My grandmother had a rule that you had to at least spend one year at Spelman. 
My sister and I firmly believe that to, in the proverb, to whom much is given, much is required. And we have always said that when we were in a position or able to give back to a school that gave us so much, we would. You know, Spellman made us the women that we are today. Spellman gave us a great education that we use to lead our own family business today. And Spellman gave us the best friends, support system, and sisterhood that we ever could have imagined. And so Aaron and I continue the legacy as we have committed to over $1.5 million in scholarships by providing a Baldwin Richardson Foods annual scholarship, which provides a first year student who is interested in the food industry with a full tuition package for all four years of her matriculation through Spelman. We are so very proud to be able to continue the legacy that my grandmother started and trust and know that I have two future Spelmanites, nine and 11 year old, and my sister has a, a one year old future Spelmanite. Um, and they know that this is a legacy that they need to continue as well. And so I hope that this inspires everyone on this Founders Day to find a way to contribute and give back to a school that gave us so much. And with that, I will pass it on to my sister, Carmen Harris, class of 2001. Thank you, Cara. As Cara said, my name is Car uh, as Cara said, my name is Carmen Harris, and I graduated from Spelman College 18 years ago with the class of 2002. Recently, one of my Spelman sisters said to me, "You know, Carmen, this isn't our first quarantine." I said, "What are you talking about, sis?" And she said, "Well, do you remember your first week at Spelman College?" I said, "Yes." After you know our tearful goodbyes to family and friends at the parting ceremony. For seven whole days, you only saw the sisters you lived with, you only ate at home at the calf, and you couldn't go any further than the Spelman Oval for your exercise. She said that was the Spelman quarantine. We laughed at the fond memories of our Fresh Woman Week um, but it reminded us that Spelman has always prepared us for the present moment. Spelman College has always prepared Black women for the fight. This moment in our global history reminds me of why it's so important to me to give to Spelman College. This moment, this sacred pause, reminds me that we all have a role to play and that role is to protect one another. My dear Spelman sisters, when you give today to Spelman College, your gift protects the future of our beloved home. This sacred pause reminds me that Black women always meet challenges with innovation. My dear Spelman sisters, at this moment, your gifts seed innovation for Black women. This moment reminds me that we must take the long view in preparation. So my dear Spelman sisters, after you've given to the annual fund, you join, like Ms. Vernita and myself, the Guardian Society. You make a planned gift, you make a legacy gift, one that takes the long view in preparation and preparing Spelman College for the future. Finally, this moment reminds me that my one gift and my one decision to protect my home is not enough. My dear Spelman sisters, it's our collective decisions. It's our collective wisdom. And it is our collective gifts that on this day, the 139th birthday of our, of our beloved Spelman College, that your gift will protect and prepare Spelman College for the future. It is our gifts that will prepare us for the undaunted fight. Thank you and happy Founders Day. I will now pass the mic to my sister Kiva. 
Good afternoon, Spelman sisters, and happy Founders Day. I hope many of you had the chance to watch the virtual Founders Day on the feed um, earlier on. It was just, just tremendous. So what's my Spelman story? My name is Kiva Wrightberry. I'm the class of 1979 from Boston, representing the Northeast region as well. And also I'm the president-elect of NASC. My Spelman story took a, a, a strange turn along the way. I started out not knowing about Spelman, as many of us did, but I knew about historically black colleges, or I knew about black schools, as we called them back then. And I wanted to attend a black college because at that time, Boston was um, extremely, extremely white. And I wanted to get away from the situation up there and wanted to travel and do something different and learn, different, learn about different people outside of the Boston area. And as you know, Boston has hundreds of schools. So the question always was, why would I leave Boston? Why not go to school there? But I wanted something different. And so initially, I was gonna to go to Fisk University in Nashville because I was gonna be a Fisk Jubilee singer. I had seen them perform years ago and, that's what, and I was a musician. That's what I wanted to do. I was going to Fisk. I applied to Fisk, I got accepted to Fisk. Well, I was on my way until my dear brother, who, who was at Northwestern, talked to me about, about college and asked me, did I wanna to go to Nashville, which was the country and Western capital of the world, or would I wanna go someplace else? He'd heard I was interested in Spelman. I said, well, I don't know. I had a teacher in high school. There was only one black teacher in my high school and she knew about Spelman. So I thought, well, I could think about going to Spelman, but I was already accepted to Fisk. My parents had sent the deposit to Fisk and it was kind of consigned that's where I would go. But thankfully, my parents knew that they wanted me to be happy and sure of where I was going. And they felt that if I didn't want to go to Fisk, then I shouldn't go. So I guess they called Fisk and got their money back. They never told me that part. But I changed and had some help and got and applied to Spelman pretty late, I'll have you know, and got in thankfully. And it has truly been the best decision that I've ever made. It changed the trajectory of my life, the people that I met there, the connections that I've had since, since graduating have been invaluable to me. Some of my favorite experiences of Spelman really center around the Glee Club. I was a music major, played the organ, so Dr. Joyce is my girl. And um, the Glee Club allowed me to have a broader sense of Spelman because we always had to go everywhere and sing. So some things that you might have missed because you didn't feel like getting up to go to convocation, we were there. So I saw all kinds of people, especially freshman year, all kinds of speakers came to campus that I might have missed had it not been for the fact that I knew I had to be there. So I'm always grateful for that, for those experiences. And um, my Glee Club sisters and I are all, music major sisters are all still very close, still love each other. And I don't think I could have gotten through at that time without them. And I'm so glad that they're still in my lives still in my life. Um, the other thing that, that we, I like to talk about is my, um, my, my best relationship, my legacy to Spelman. It's one and the same person. My legacy and my best relationship as a result of Spelman somewhat is my daughter, who is the class of 2009. I know she's listening, love you. And um, she, she, had to, she didn't have to go there. I gave her, I gave her the same option as someone else mentioned that, that, um, that she had to at least apply. And if she got accepted, she needed to go to Spellbound. And at Spellbound, well, it kind of seals the deal for many people. And she, she's, I know she's thrilled that she went there. Um, she, for a long time, only knew of Spellbound, but that's all I talked about because I've been active in NASC almost since graduation. So I've held a, a lot of different roles. And once she was born, she had to help me fold envelopes and fold papers and stuff envelopes and get things out to people. So she's been a good, a good worker all that time. But when you think about the legacy of Spelman, you want to think about it 
in terms of individuals, how many people can you influence to attend Spelman, but also what are they gonna do once they get there? How are we gonna help them make it through financially and from a, um, a sisterhood, sisterhood support? So I also, I too also encourage everyone to give. It's, it's easy and it's difficult at the same time. There are all kinds of ways that you can structure your life so that you can give on a regular basis. My preference has always been the automatic deduction because I firmly believe that had I not done it that way, I could not also have put Kyla through college at the same time. The money was already coming out. I didn't worry about it anymore. I had to worry about paying that room and board and tuition. So I encourage you to think about giving to Spelman on a regular basis. That's so important. We have a lot of big donors, but if they were to stop one year, there might not be anyone to replace them. So we, we have to give on a regular basis. I believe my class is committed to doing that. We started a new campaign in preparation for our 45th reunion in 2024. We're asking classmates to give on a regular basis and not wait until reunion year or the year before to start making your donations. So those of you who have who have um haven't given yet for Founders Day, think about it. I want to put it on your hearts to think about our sisters who had difficulty getting home because of this pandemic, who had difficulty getting their materials, their computers. We've got to be able, we've got to be able to support them. We need to make sure that other other young women can have the same Spelman experience, if not better, than what we had. So I just want to share that with you all and ask you to have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Founders Day. Um, be safe, be loving, check on your sisters, text, email, phone calls, whatever you do, check on one another to make sure that we all are safe because we've lost people because of this pandemic. Keep checking on one another. I love all of you and thank you, stay safe.